Welcome back. Let's continue exploring. Nothing but some photographs. An envelope. And money, but we can't take it. Lame. Ooh, cigars. Wait. No, not that drawer. Not that drawer either. What drawer was it? This one. No! <laughs> Damn it. There we go. Let's grab that, whatever it is. What is that? What's this? Ooh, a diary. Well, this should be fun to read. Sit back and relax, people, while I read you a story. The construction of the railway bridge is almost complete and went quite smoothly. Hold on a sec. Sorry about that. The construction of the railway bridge is almost complete and went quite smoothly. It took longer than I expected, yet I wish it would have lasted even more. So, I will be very sad to leave South Africa. I've become so attached to it, its culture, its arts, over the past few months, and I can't help feeling as if it was already a part of me. I will surely return someday. Soon, hopefully. Although I'm afraid there is a great deal of work to be taken care of back in old Britain. Fortunately, I made good friends here who are ecstatic about my new appreciation of their country. They've offered me some wonderful objects as a token of gratitude, which I have already crated and gotten ready to ship. Along with many trinkets, I've brought myself. It looks like I'm about to start a very substantial collection. Oh, so we, uh, we know where all that African stuff upstairs came from now. Let's keep reading. It's a good thing Catherine agreed to move into our new home, although I fear several renovations will have to be made. Even more if I'm intending to start a serious new hobby. It seems I'll have to get back to work. John Patterson has just told me some natives are causing trouble. A very unfortunate thing, although I'm secretly rejoicing. The natives won't leave. It's not like they're causing trouble so much as they're unsettling our workers. The only complaint so far has been distraction. They just stand still between the trees, staring at us, without blinking an eye. I watch them for a few minutes, and they seem truly like some Trenibus statues. At first, it was just annoying, but lately it's become downright creepy. They seem to be stalking us. It's not like they're hindering the construction, but there is a general uneasy feeling as if they're about to jump at us at any moment. I think I'll hire some protection as a measure of precaution. Fascinating. I've been looking into these natives. They live in a nearby village and are a very small group, but they seem to manage quite well. I had thought of them as quite an uncivilized drive, but their movements are calculated and one can perceive a sense of careful organization in their, in their tasks. Oddly enough, they seem to be very brutish and their aspect looks awful, although I couldn't take a good look at their facial features as I followed one of them completely on my own, and it could have been dangerous getting any closer. Also. The village is poor and very rough, but some of the shacks leapt out at us, inviting or special. It made me very curious. I'll try to come closer tomorrow. My second expedition to the village of the natives has been, has been failed by an unexpected problem at the bridge. I'm afraid it was due to a slight miscalculation on my part an indication that I should be focusing more on the task at hand than put my sudden love for all African things aside for a moment. It was my fault, and I accept it. They're at it again, lurking beyond the forest. 
It's amazing how they've changed our perception of the surroundings. At first, we were delighted by the quiet nature of the place. Now, we fear what horrors might be concealed in the dark and foreboding cloak of trees. The tops loom above us, overshadowing the bridge, and strange noises haunt our meals. Even the river is telling ungodly secrets. We could be, of course, a little sensitive towards distractions, but I can't help feeling the area has, in fact, become more sinister. And yet, I'm still looking forward to satisfying my curiosity about the tribe. At last, I found something more about the neighboring tribe. This is an excellent finding, and I just can't withhold my excitement. Some elders at the local town happened to know about them, but only through stories they heard. The most surprising thing is that the tribe was assumed to be extinct long ago, but according to my vague descriptions, the elders think that we could be dealing with a legend here. Everything they have ever learned of them was during their childhood, when the tribe was stalking the town, much in the same way they've been stalking us. People used to call them Tahalm, as such was the sound of screams heard echoing late in the night. They'd come out into the streets and see an evil glitter atop a hill in the distance. Some would say it was a fire, others the cursed spirit of an ancient god. Whatever it was, they say the bright light and those fantastic screams was bone-chilling. The macabre scene would suddenly stop just as it had begun out of nowhere, never to be seen again in the days to come. Intervals between these horrible nights became longer and longer, until soon they faded into oblivion. The tribe apparently had retreated back into obscurity, until now. They were later known as the Dalmar, a rather more scientific name, although none of the people I spoke with could possibly remember its origin. I find it extremely surprising that nobody has ever heard about this tribe with the exception of a few townspeople. It must be incredibly rare, and judging by the stories passed on from generations in the town, very old. I will confess that I've become nearly obsessed with this strange tribe. I see them as prized goal of my appreciation towards all South African things. A dangerous, yet irresistible reward. I feel as if they were my discovery. I simply have to study them before leaving. I fear I won't have the chance to ever again. It's become an important goal of mine. Even more important than finishing the bridge. Finally! I've managed to see them! My god, what a disturbing spectacle! When we arrived, they were moving around the village very slowly, without speaking or communicating with each other, each minding his or her own business, completely alien to the rest of the world. They were filthy-looking, coarse and downright disgusting. I couldn't see any weapons, but they could have been stored somewhere. It was all a very strange behavior in a tribe. They must be quite unique. Then, as if they'd all suddenly been come possessed by some wild spirit, they began shaking spasmodically and screaming like mad. They began... Some of them dropped their knees and lifted their heads to the sky, eyes blank and moaning in an indescribable way. Two of them walked away, still in that motion, montanous and slow manner, and in great contrast to the rest of the scene, into a shack. The next minute they brought out into the open an odd-looking mask. Its shapes, colors, and overall looks, while unsettling, were mesmerizing, and I felt instantly hypnotized by it. It rendered my modest collection of African curiosities into a dull and uninteresting items. The mask was very ominous, and the whole tribe seemed to greatly revere it. Soon began to gather around it and move in circles, fluttering and chanting a guttural psalm. Judging by their motions and aspect of the whole ritual, 
Must have been some sort of war ritual. I'm not sure how to explain what happened next as I feel my pulse is already throbbing. Words fail me to recount the most disturbing thing I have ever witnessed. One of the male villagers walked into the middle, near the mask, by his own will. It was an almost an autonomic act. All of a sudden, the remaining members became silent. I can't tell for how long it lasted, but I was afraid to breathe. I think Dalby and the others were also scared. They wouldn't even blink. I remember being soaked wet and expectant. The silence was so unnatural. Then, a few members separated from people circling the mask and jumped on the single villager, beating him to death. To be completely faithful to the event, the small crowd tore him apart. They grabbed his legs in twos and threes and twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth, and the torso soon disappeared under the frenzied tangle of hands. In a matter of a few minutes, the villager was turned into a red sack of bones. Not one of the attackers had the compassion to snap his neck during the sickening process. It was all very methodical, as if it was just another mundane task. The most terrifying aspect, though, was that the victim didn't even cringe. The silence was so deep I could hear his flesh ripping. I would expect any living creature to scream its guts out in such a condition. I can't tell whether he was drugged or half asleep, but I did recognize him dancing like everyone else before walking into the middle of the circle. It was the most outrageous and sadistic sacrifice I've ever heard of. I don't think I'll ever forget what I saw. My intentions of approaching further, even if they didn't have any weapons at hand, vanished. Those creatures, I dare not call them human beings, could have killed my whole company in a blink of an eye with their rage. They seemed to be completely out of themselves and willing to destroy anything intruding their path. While the images of the sacrifice still haunt my thought, I can't seem to forget that mask. It was so deceptively simple and yet perfect in its design. I haven't seen anything like it. I surely would love to take a better look. I feel the Dalmar, dangerous as they are, could be the most important ethnical, ethnical finding in decades. What I've seen today is crying for some further investigation. I just can't leave them like that. I would never forgive myself. And that mask... That mask... I was ecstatic after reading the journal. The material was incredible. And so, it would appear that the plot thickens. We've discovered more about this house's first inhabitant, James, and how he went on an expedition to Africa and discovered a very disturbing tribe by the name of Dalmar. And that's what that letter was talking about upstairs in the gallery. Oh. <laughs> little disturbing. That huge collection of books was impressive. I would have gladly spent days going through them. A diploma granting the title of Construction Engineer to James T. Blackwood. Ah, James T. Black, Construction Engineer. That would explain why he was building a bridge in the middle of this uh, South Africa. <sighs> Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video.